Our natural world has many different things that impact it, whether it's natural impacts on nature's life cycles or human impacts, whether they are beneficial or destructive. Now, there are natural impacts that happen into our ecosystems every day, affecting our abiotic and biotic elements. Now, these two elements affect each other greatly. Now, you're probably wondering, what are abiotic and biotic elements? And that's a great question. Abiotic is everything that is not living, like our soils, the water, the sun, and the air. Biotic is everything that is living, like us, humans, mammals, fish, birds, amphibians, reptiles, plants, and trees. With abiotic elements, we have producers, consumers, and decomposers. These three groups have a great natural impact on each other. A producer is something that creates things like energy and food. So our producers are our plants and trees that help create food and oxygen for other living things. Consumers are the ones that feed on the producers and also feed on other consumers. Examples of consumers are our white-tailed deer. White-tailed deer eat all types of trees, shrubs, and wildflowers to stay healthy. Lastly, we have our decomposers. Our decomposers take apart things like bones, feces, and dead leaves. They take out their nutrients, creating healthy new biotic elements like soils that will help the producers create new foods. A good demonstration of how the natural environment can impact itself is using the coyote, rabbit, and plants example. Now the more plants we have, produces lots of food for rabbits, making the population of rabbits increase, which will then also allow the population of coyotes to increase. As the plants start to disappear from being eaten by the rabbits, the population of rabbits will decrease which will then make the amount of coyotes start to decrease as well. Once the amount of rabbits has decreased, this will then allow the plants to start growing again, creating more food for the rabbits, allowing their population of rabbits to grow, which creates more food for the coyotes, allowing their population to grow, creating this beautiful life cycle that is all dependent on one another. As humans, we have the ability to impact the natural environment in a very beneficial way, but also in very destructive ways. Thankfully, there are amazing organizations out there to help protect the natural environment. We have provincial and national lands set aside for wildlife. These include provincial parks, national parks, territorial wildlife sanctuaries, and migratory bird sanctuaries. These lands help preserve all of our species of wildlife and plants. Another way humans can benefit the natural environment is by manipulating it to preserve it. Sometimes too much of something is not a good thing. If a population of deer start to grow too big and start eating all the plants, then that is leaving less food for other animals and other deer. This can start causing animals to become hungry and fighting each other for food. As humans, we can help manage this. By doing research and calculating some math, we can understand what the correct amount of a species should be in an ecosystem. Ontario Parks naturalists conduct research annually that contributes to helping manage the populations of plants and animals to make sure all living things and non-living things are thriving. As humans, we can also have a very negative impact on the environment, and we need to understand how to control them. Building new houses and roads is very nice, but to do so, we must destroy already existing ecosystems. Before building anything, we need to look at the lands and forests first and see what is already living there. How many animals will have to find a new home and how can we help find them new homes? While making as little change as possible to the lands. An example of this is when we put in new trails that cross waterways or small streams. We can install bridges to allow the water and aquatic species to still continue to flow in life. Another thing we can do is to make sure we are not transporting invasive species. We can also help by removing invasive species of plants like white sweet clover that are not supposed to be growing in certain areas. 
Doing this will help the natural species that belong there begin to grow and thrive. The best way to start trying to help benefit nature is asking yourself what are things I can do around my house and in everyday life that will be beneficial to the natural environment. These things can be as easy as putting out bird feeders or even going for a hike, stay on the trails that have already been created. As humans, we need to do what we can to have beneficial impacts on the environment.